Hello, I'm Dr. Carolyn Richardson, and this is Tips After the Visit, a program where I pass along information that has been helpful to my patients and their parents. You might find this information useful also. For some subjects, you may want to discuss the information with your child's pediatrician or medical care provider to make sure that the information is right for you and your child. Today, I will be talking about identifying food insecurity. Food insecurity is a situation where a family may run out of food before they have more money to purchase more food, or the family may not have adequate funds in the household budget to purchase the nutritious food that they need. Good health has been tied with good nutrition and it has been determined that screening for food insecurity should be done at the health maintenance visit. There is a two question tool that can be used to identify families who may be challenged with food insecurity. When asking these questions, you can just explain to the parents or the patient that nutrition is tied with good health and you're just trying to make sure that they have adequate nutrition so that they will have the best health possible. Food insecurity is more prevalent in your area than you may realize. Here in Harris County where I practice, there are some 724,750 individuals who are challenged with food insecurity. That number translates to 16.6% of individuals, or if you're talking about children, that's 23.6% of children who are impacted by food insecurity. When doing the screening for food insecurity, it can be done by you or your staff, the medical provider or the staff, in a discreet manner so that the patient can maintain their dignity. I was conducting a two-year health maintenance visit on a little boy when I noticed that the, when I checked the child's growth chart, he had not gained weight in over a year. This is not normal. I got information from the mother to determine what the child had been eating over the past 24 hours. And it was in the course of this conversation that I found out that the child had not had any dinner because the mother did not have food to give the child to eat. The mother explained that the child would not go to sleep so she gave the child a glass of water to drink, and after the drinking the glass of water, the child was able to go to sleep. Now, I should point out that water does not have calories. The child was able to go to sleep after drinking the glass of water because he felt full, but the child had not been gaining weight because the child did not have adequate nutrition. I noticed that this particular child already received government health insurance. I explained to the mother that since he qualified for government health insurance, he probably would also qualify for government nutritional assistance. We were able to get the mother immediate food supply from a local food pantry. And then the mother was able to apply for and then receive government nutritional assistance. If you are viewing this and you are a parent or a child, a patient, and you realize that you may have food insecurity challenge, your medical care provider can be a resource for you to help you get the food and nutrition assistance that you need. If you are a medical care provider, you can search the internet to identify the food pantries and food banks in your area. There's a locator that's based on zip code so you can find the resources in your area. Familiarize yourself with these so you can help your patients that you identify that are challenged with food insecurity. Well, that's all we have for today. Check each week for more tips after the visit.